Hey everybody, John Swift. Today I am out on the bayfront of Sarasota where there is a construction site and we're going to see if we can find some uh, shark's teeth out here. And I'll explain to you in a minute. So step one is to find an area that you think uh, may have more potential. Like this area has a lot of scattered shells but it also is on an embankment where the water has washed downhill and revealed a lot of these shells. So what I just found, whoops, I think, did I just lose one? I think I just lost one. Wow, where the heck did that go? Hold on a second. All right, so I, I finally think I found one and it's pretty small. <clears throat> you see this right here? You can see it has somewhat of a grayish tint, grayish black tint, and it also, is pointy like a uh, kind of like a triangle here this is probably about a centimeter big you see my finger and you can see that so this is what you're looking for right here see this will stand out among other black things like this is just black and so I believe we, we've got a tooth here so I'm gonna flip this up into my hand it's a very tiny one but it's still a tooth so this is this is the shape we're looking for and I don't know what kind of tooth this is but it's definitely not a megalodon tooth so if you look at the top of this tooth it's more black on where I say where it would attach to the gum and then the bottom point the pointy part that is it is more of a whitish grayish color that's the shape you're looking for I'm trying to think it, it almost looks like a uh, you know a, a steers head with the little head on the bottom and the two horns coming out. It kind of has that shape. Let's look at the other side of this bad boy. And I think this is the back of the tooth, which is flatter. Um, that's what we're looking for here, folks. All right, so check out this piece of uh, black rock that I just found right here so I'm not an expert um, but what I usually do is if I think that something possibly is a fossilized bone what I'll do is I'll take it home and look it up on the internet but look at the features of this it looks like part of it is sort of porous here and then the other part sort of has a really shiny uh, looks like it chipped off there on one side and it also looks like it has a big chip here. So I'm going to take that home and see if I can find a match for that online and maybe look up a little bit of uh, info on if this possibly could be if a fossilized bone or if it's just a, a black rock or a fossilized rock. But I'm just going to stick that in my pouch for now. So the funny thing is today is... Uh, yesterday I found two within about 10 minutes which is ironic because now I've been out here for about 45 minutes looking and I found what I think are a couple fossils damn it I think I lost the tooth again alrighty so I am ready to head home I've been out here for probably an hour an hour and a half probably my brain's starting to get tired after looking and looking at him and my back too so, you may be asking yourself, why are you able to find shells on a construction site? Well, the reason is, is because at one time, maybe thousands of years ago, there was, the water levels were higher, so the beaches were actually 20 or 30 miles uh, inland from the coast of Florida. So all those um, shells were deposited thousands of years ago and they're still there today and when they go to uh, dig out earths out of like basically what they do is they make a big pond and they take all this dirt out and then they sell the, all the dirt and it goes to construction projects you know to build up um, the level of the building or fill in something or you know whatever so they're taking those shells from you know 20 30 miles inland and bringing them out here as well and this area which is the Sarasota, the Sarasota Bay Shore was actually a fill-in project that happened early in the 19th century where they actually filled in this area to make more land here so that they could 
put these parks in and marinas and all this stuff. So uh, let's just say 70 to 100 years ago, they filled in all this area with shell-based fill to make sort of a, there's actually kind of like a little peninsula that sticks out here. And that's the reason all these shells are here. And uh, depending on, you know, projects that they've done in the past, they'll bring in more shells to make paths or something. And right now what they're doing here is they're making, uh, they're redoing the intersection. So there's all this construction out here. So that is the reason why you can find shark's teeth as well as fossils and shells uh, at an inland area. A lot of uh, people that, that, that hunt for shark's teeth go in the rivers because the rivers are constantly washing away the dirt and exposing the shark's teeth. And people actually find large, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of like four, five, six inch megalodon teeth. In some cases, it's like as big as your hand. They can get that big. And you can go on YouTube and, you know, go on, you know, blogs and stuff and learn about that stuff where, um, how people do that. I'm not a super experienced shark's tooth hunter. We usually go to the beach down in Venice Beach and we'll just, you know, spend an hour or two and we'll just be walking through and you'll just see them right on the beach. That also works too. But don't discount the fact that you can actually find shark's teeth inland, not near the water. That's, that's the secret that a lot of people don't know is you can go to a construction site. Like I said, when I, uh, found these people doing that and I asked them what they were doing, they told me the reason because you know, it had shell shell debris filled in and that was you know 10 or 15 miles inland and within five minutes I found a tooth there just right on the top. You can see it perfectly. So just wanted to uh, drop some knowledge on you and it's kind of fun, you know, a little scavenger hunt. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know, maybe leave a little thumbs up in there or a comment. Stories. I hope you have a great day.